Hi, Dave Williams again, and this is part two of how to design an arbitrary sequence counter using JK flip-flops. In the first part, what we did is we came up with a, a state transition diagram, which is just de defining how our states, how our system moves from state to state, and translated that into the state transition table, where each row of the table shows the current state and then the next state. The next thing that we need to do is for each of these transitions from state to state, we need to figure out what the J and the K values need to be to cause that transition to occur. And each, ones of the, each one of the J's and K's controls one of the Q's. And the inputs to the J's and the K's are going to come from what the current values of, the, of all three of the Q's are. However, the, current, the values that go into the J and K will only control one of the Q's. So for example, we need to come up with a list of the J and K values that we need to control Q2 based on the transition from the Q2, Q1, Q0 of the current state to the Q2, Q1, and Q0 of the next state. Before doing all that though, let's remind ourselves on how the JK flip-flop works. Here's my clock input. So this is a rising edge triggered JK flip-flop and we have four different possible combinations for the J and the K values that could be input into the flip-flop. So J and K could both be zero. We could have J zero and K one. We could have J one and K zero, or we could have both J and K one. These values of J and K only matter on the rising edge of the clock. Given the J and the K value at the rising edge of the clock, what is going to happen to Q? Well, if j is 0, k is 0, nothing is going to happen. There will be no change to q. We can consider this the latch state. When j is 0 and k is 1 on the rising edge of the clock, what will happen is q will reset. In other words, it will become 0. When j is 1 and k is 0 on the rising edge of the clock, q is set. It becomes a 1. And when j is 1, k is 1 on the rising edge of the clock, q toggles. So if it was a 1, then it becomes a 0. If it was a 0, then it becomes a 1. And then we can use the rules of the JK flip-flop for each one of the transitions to determine, what, to, to determine what the j value and the k value should be to cause that transition. So for example, in this first transition, uh, of course this is the current state, and this is the next state, so when we're transitioning from a 0 to a 7, Q2 goes from a 0 to a 1, Q1 goes from a 0 to a 1, and Q0 goes from a 0 to a 1. And all in all, we could have four different transitions. The flip-flop could be a 0, and it could be transitioning to a 0. It could be a 0, and it transitions to a 1. Or it could be a 1, and transition to a 0. Or it could be a 1, and transition to a 1. Now for each one of these transitions, we, wanted, we want to determine what value j should be and what value k should be to cause that transition to occur. So for a flip-flop to go from a 0 to a 0, or in other words, stay a 0, then the jk flip-flop will either have no change occur or will be a, a reset. So that means j0 and k0 to cause the, for no change, or j1, j0 and k1. So j will have to be a 0, but it doesn't matter what k is for that transition. To go from a 0 to a 1, we would either need to toggle or set. So we'd either need j a 1 and k a 0, or j a 1 and k a 1. So j has to be a 1 for that transition, but it doesn't matter what k is. Next, we, can try, we could possibly transition from a 1 to a 0. For that to occur, we could either force the reset where j is a 0, k is a 1, or we can cause a toggle to occur. j is a 1, k is a 1. So for this case, it doesn't matter what j is as long as k is a 1. And finally, to go from a 1 to a 1, we could either have no change, so j0, zero, k0, zero, or cause a set to occur, j1, k0. So in this case, again, it doesn't matter what j is as long as k is a 0. So what we'll do is use this information about what values J and K need to be for transitions to occur 
to determine what each one of the J values and each one of the K values need to be in each one of the current to next transitions in this table. So we're just going to be worried about J2 and K2. In the transition from A0 to A1, we need J to be a 1 and K to be an X. In this transition, and in this row of the table, we go from a 0 to a 0, so we need j of 0 and k of x. In the next transition, q2 goes from a 0 to a 1, so we need j is 1 and k is x. In the next row, the transition is 0 to 0, so we need 0 x. Next row goes 1 to 1, so we get x 0 and then 1 to 1 again, x, 0, 1 to 1 again, x, 0, and then finally a 1 to a 0, which is an x, 1. The same process is repeated for j1 and k1, looking at the current q1 value transitioning to the next q1 value. And finally, the J0, K0 values can be determined from the Q0 current value to, to the Q0 next value transition. Now we know for each current value to next value transition what the J values and K values need to be to make that transition occur. The last thing to do is to determine the logic for each one of these six inputs that is needed to feed into the JK flip-flop for each one of the Q2, Q1, and Q0s. So I will show you how to do that in the next synchronous counter design video. Thanks for watching.